Madam Chair, Congresswoman Kelly, Congresswoman Presley, Congresswoman Maloney, this is truly an extraordinary hearing. Um, and it's got history making potential um, depending on what we do with it. And I just want to thank you all for uh, arranging such an extraordinary panel of witnesses. Um, the, Dr. Gillespie Bell, let me start with you. Um, you st stated that uh, one factor stands out when you control for all of the variables. And I want to be very clear about this. You're saying that African-American women uh, suffer disproportionately negative outcomes regardless of income or wealth. So that even within the category of affluent African-American women, they, we are still seeing racial disproportion. Is that right? That's absolutely correct. Thank you um, so much for recognizing that. Um, yes, we find that um, looking specifically at severe maternal morbidity, that a Black woman with a college degree is twice as likely to experience a severe maternal morbidity when compared to a white woman with less than a high school diploma. And so again, as you've already said, and, and the, that, that is a, a testament to addressing for addressing education, addressing those socioeconomic factors and still having adverse outcomes. And, and you, you're citing studies that have um, isolated all kinds of variables that uh, refute different theories about biological differences, physiological differences, all of it. It comes down as Dr. Uh, August or Augusty, forgive me, I missed the original pronunciation, but Dr. August, let me come to you. It comes down to what you say is not race, but racism. And uh, I, I love this point, Dr. Augusti, because you've made a point, I think several of the panelists uh, have also echoed, which is that race itself is a social construction. The whole concept of race was a construction of racism, the ideology of racism that uh, in America was put to service for enslavement and oppression and exploitation of people. Um, and so you blame it generally on race, it makes it sound like there's nothing we can do about it. But if you identify specific structures of racism, that's something that we can actually uh, change. We've got the power to change that. And I, it's so moving to hear these doctors come in and say that. So Dr. August, let me ask you, what are some of those specific manifestations of racism in our medical practices, in our medical system, that we can alter by being conscious of this and intervening? Thank you very much for the question. So yes, as you can see from the conversation that we're having here, it highlights that there's racism at all levels. And unfortunately, we know that racism is structural and institutional. Um, and implicit bias based on our healthcare providers contributes to the racial and ethnic disparities that we are all talking about and have contributed to this poor outcome. So organizations like ACOG are committed to addressing the issues around racism in medicine, particularly at the, at the base of structural and institutional racism. And we want to be able to partner and are glad to partner with Congress in, in, in correcting these. I just want to say that, you know, in my experience, healthcare providers, physicians, don't enter the profession with the intention of providing inequitable health care. It is, a, it is a fact of the implicit bias on part of our healthcare care professionals um, that needs to be addressed. Very nice. Okay. Dr. Taylor, I want to ask you uh, quickly, if I could, um, how has insurance coverage been shown to improve health outcomes for, um, for women who are delivering? And I, I say this because Medicaid, I think, uh, and Medicaid coverage can be a critical part of the answer here. So does, it, does expanding health insurance coverage work to improve health outcomes, Dr. Taylor? Thank you for that question, Representative Rafkin. And absolutely, health insurance coverage is essential um, to not only ensure that, that women can keep up with their medical appointments, um, you know, support, it also, supports you know, the health of the infant as well. When mom is healthy, the infant is also healthy. Um, so the continuum of care is, is critical and that goes hand in hand with having insurance coverage. Thank um, you so much. Uh, finally, uh, Mr. Johnson, uh, your testimony just broke my heart and I wanna thank you for being out there 
Um, speaking up for your wife, for your kid's mom, and for all of those moms. And um, I wonder if you would just say a word about the importance of making this an issue, not just for women, but for men too. So absolutely. So thank you. Thank you for your comments. Um, it's critically important that as we are fighting to protect mothers, that we are doing everything that we can to also empower their partners. If that means a father, if that means a support person, if that means whatever, however they're coming to their birthing experience, um, that they're informed and they're empowered about potential warning signs, that they understand how to advocate for them if their partner can't advocate for themselves. But it's also critically important that we reform systems in a manner in which these voices are heard and they're not dismissed. And a black man such as myself, who is advocating for his wife at her most vulnerable point, is seen and heard and not seen as a threat. That's what we must do moving forward. Thank you so much. I yield back, Madam Chair. Thank you for your indulgence. The gentleman from Maryland yields back, and I now recognize a gentleman from Pennsylvania, Congressman Keller. 